Hello and thank you for joining me. I'm Heather Forgan of stampwithnelly.com. I'm an independent stamping up demonstrator based in the UK. Today's video um, links with my blog post, which is part of the Project Share Project blog hop. I share projects from my very talented teammates, Jez of nigeza.co.uk, Jill of paperdaisycrafting.co.uk and Verity of inkybutterfly.com. We share projects every Thursday, um, but on the first Saturday of the month, we make something new to share um, with each other and with all of you. This month, we are celebrating sale abrasion. So, this started on the 3rd of August and will run to the 30th of September. Celebration, in, in case you're not aware, is where if you have a qualifying spend during this period, you can claim some free products. And this is the one that I am featuring today. This is Penguin Playmates. It's 12 by 12 designer series paper and is adorable. So there are, as always, double-sided designs. So you've got cute animals on one side and you've got lovely patterns on the other side there. Lovely dots, stripes and trees on that one. So, um, super, super cute. And one of the cutest things about it is that it lends itself very, very well to fussy cutting out these little creatures. Lots of them to choose from. So I've been fussy cutting from this one. Nice and easy to do using my trusty paper snips. So as I say, this is free. You can earn this free when you spend um, £45 or more in my Stamping Up shop between now and 30th September 2021. Now, this coordinates beautifully with the Penguin Place stamp set and I'm using some of the sentiments from that and my punch that I haven't even used yet, which is the Penguin Builder Punch. Um, so I will be playing with that very soon. So I have made a card using the paper. So that is using one of the designs and just the opposite side of the same page. Cut out one of those cute penguins and that's one of the sentiments from the Penguin Place stamp set. This little chocolate holder holds a lovely lint square and again I've just used the designer series paper but I've used the kind of uh, pattern and then it shows you the little creatures on the inside there as well so lovely that you get to see both parts of the designer series paper again I've added some fussy cut elements from that page that I showed you now I have gone ahead and fussy cut some more of these. So I've got some foxes. I've got another penguin left over because I've used a few of them. And I did fussy cut one of the polar bears, but he's a bit big um, for that. So um, I will use him for some other project, I'm quite sure, because he's super cute. What I thought I could do with these is, yes, I could just um, gift them. But I've put ribbon on there, so I could hang that on my Christmas tree. I could also, using the Playful Alphabet dies and another one of the Celebration pro products, which is this Be Dazzling paper. I'll take it out of the, the wrapper, but you can see it is super shiny. It, it kind of looks like hexagon bits of, of glitter glued to a card. Absolutely no shed though, which is 
exactly what clean crafters look for. Um, so yeah, using my playful alphabets, I can put, I can cut out initials and I could use that as a placeholder or I could hang that on tree for um, Douglas to find. Um, or if I was feeling very generous and had lots of those chocolates and hadn't eaten lots of those chocolates already, um, I could make an advent calendar with them. So we could do double numbers on there as well. So lots of different ideas going around in my head, um, but they are super, super cute. So I'm going to show you quickly how to make both of these using only card, um, white card, which I'm using for my card base, a sheet of designer series paper that I have already cut to size and a little bit for a stamped sentiment and one of my fussy cut. I think I'll go with Foxy on that one. Okay, so my usual card base, the dimensions for that will be in the um, blog post description bar below. Just click there and you can hop on over to my blog, but you can also um, then hop to see Jill, Jez and Verity's blogs and see what they're celebrating for us. So this piece was 10 by 14 and I've just cut that down to 10 by 10. Okay. So I've got a little bit of contrast at the top there. The way I like to do it and everybody can be different, is to butt them up together there and then place some tearing tape over the join, like so. Let me just get my, ooh, that's moved. That's moved. Let's just gently force that back down again. There we go. Not bad. I'm going to cover the join um, with my sentiment anyway, so it's not such a big deal. Talking of which, in the original card, I used Be Cool, Be Chill, Be Merry. I figure that that is too long to use with the fox, so instead I have mounted Season's Greetings, which is from the same stamp set, and I'm just using Memento, so it's just black, ink, white card paste, and that designer series paper that you can get for free. So I'm gonna... And this is just from my scraps pile, and I think it's a centimetre and a half wide, but it's longer than my card base. And I am going to add that. Let me just check where I want it. So we've got it reasonably square. that there okay so I'm just going to add some wet glue to the back of this it will go over but that's fine just using my grid mat to make sure that I've got that relatively straight no glue excellent and then I can just chop off the excess from there and that way I don't have to worry about being precise with my stamping. Um, I can stamp where I want to stamp and then just go with it. So this little guy is going to get popped up with some stamping dimensionals which I've got off to the side here. Two come off together so I'll just use those three, take the backings off. and pop him in there and then it's just a case of adding that on to my card base and 
And I prefer to use wet glue um, for my cards just because it gives me a bit of wiggle room. And I might as well use the adhesive there, but to make sure that I still get that wiggle room, add a little bit of the wet glue on top. And bring my card base in and get that as central as I can. Copy with where it is, bring my bone folder in and that will stick nice and fast. Okay, so that's my card done. Super, super easy card. Um, just chopping and changing the papers around and using those fussy cut elements and whatever sentiments you've got around. The little treat holder is nice and quick and easy as well. So this piece, I'm, uh, my measurements for my 3D items, I tend to use inches. I use centimetres for my cards. Um, it is just simply my preference. And I tend to use inches for my 3D because my super um, simply scored board is marked out in inches there. Now, this piece is two and five eighths of an inch by six inches. So you can get lots of them out of that designer, that 12 by 12 designer series paper. So I'm just scoring that at three eighths of an inch and turn it around and do that at three eighths of an inch as well. And then on the long side, I am doing that at three and three quarters and four and one eighth. So that's another three eighths difference there. Okay. Now I am going to bring my trimmer back in because I want to do a little bit of cutting on this as well. Now I have, I want to cut from the top of that down one and seven eighths. Now that's kind of difficult to see on the trimmer. So I put a little piece of low tack tape on there as a guide. So I've got my Scoring blade has a little groove on it. I'm lining that up with the edge of that tape and that should be one and seven eighths. Bring this in and line it back up at three eighths. Uh, two, three, three. Three eighths there. So my score line should be in that little track there okay I'm going to flip it over and do exactly the same now it's a little bit more difficult to see the in fact I won't I'll do it that side three eighths and bring that down so that that comes to that line comes to the edge of my tape there. If it's not absolutely precise, it doesn't really matter. And I'll show you why. So I've got a little bit more snipping to do. I'm going to snip those little squares and just chop them. Okay. I will do the same on the other side, but what I also want to do is just chop straight across there. Chop straight across. Up those score lines and just take a little wedge out of those. Super easy. Not a huge amount of scrap. I'll just use my bone folder to reinforce those lines. Just go gently because you're only dealing with paper here. It doesn't need any real force. Okay, now 
I want to put some glue on those little tabs. So bend them in and put glue on that side. Then I want to attach that to the inside of those edges, getting a nice join there. Bring it square and do the same here on that side. Get it square first before I press down hard. There we go. And then add some glue to this piece and that is just going to fold round on there. Now, this is where it might get a little bit tricky to make sure that you get that nicely adhered. Just pinching it. There we go. And same with that side. A little easier this time because I can press against the bottom piece there. And this is where I said if you don't um, get your cuts precisely there, it doesn't really matter. If there's a bit overhanging, you can just chop it yourself. Okay, now what I forgot to do ah, was the fancy tag topper bit. So hopefully, mm, yeah, it does just fit. I really do that bit before you've um, <laughs> built up the bottom bit. And then just some decoration. So I'm going to stick with me my little foxy friend here on this one. I fussy cut one of the little trees from the paper again. Just pop that in on there just as a little extra. And pop him up with dimensionals again. Plenty on them. Not going to go anywhere. And there he is. He's so cute, all curled up there. Okay, now I have a, another chocolate square that can just slide in there. And again, I think I used six inches of ribbon, roughly. that through. I've got a little clip here. I'm going to just hold that there whilst I get some twine. And tie that nice and tight and then in a double knot. You could add a bow if you wished. And just chop the tails. And there we go. We've got a second cute little and again you can put your letters for somebody's initials for their place setting or you can um just leave it as it is to hang on your tree as much nicer chocolate treats than we used to get hanging on our Christmas tree back in the day um, or you could use it for as an advent. So just using card from a card basis and a little bit of card for sentiments and some ribbon and we've added to only use some of that gorgeous celebration um, designer series paper which you get for free. I hope you've enjoyed these projects. As I said earlier this is part of a blog hop so please do click on the description bar below. Go over to my blog where you'll get the links to the products that I have used and um, also the full dimensions for these projects and 
more importantly, links to my talented friends' blogs to see what they're using from their celebration free products. Thank you so much for watching. Until the next time, take care. Bye bye.